This is a uh, community celebration of resilience in the face of year seven of the overdose crisis. In what should be a pretty somber day, community members here in the downtown east side are still finding a way to show resilience by marching, by singing songs, by eating food together. It's celebrating life, really. It's about celebrating the fact that some of us have survived this, but it's like, yeah, we're losing a lot of people, but at the same time, it's like we need to like not reflect on that all the time. BC declared a public health emergency seven years ago because of skyrocketing deaths from unregulated toxic drugs. Since then, 11,000 British Columbians have died. Everyone's dead. I'm like, that's it. The, the sad reality of the fact is drug policy is not changing. And the longer you let it languish, the worse this situation's going to get. The BC government has made some changes over the last seven years. In January, it legalized the possession of small amounts of drugs, something that public health experts, police, and advocates called for. But advocates say decreasing Criminalizing drugs still doesn't go far enough, and some say that has characterized the government's whole approach. Drug researcher Mark Hayden says BC needs to realize prohibition doesn't work and it needs to regulate all drugs. That's how we need to talk about it, as opposed to what we're doing now, which is kind of minimalist and small incremental changes that um, still produce an overdose death crisis. In lieu of those big changes, for the past seven months, the Drug User Liberation Front, or DULF, has been buying drugs on the black market, testing them, and giving them to a small group of club members in protest. And while it plans to keep expanding this program, more has to be done. The solution isn't DULF. DULF is just a game plan. It's a, it's a program you could implement easily across the province. In Vancouver, Kirjunos. City News.